my first major film was High High. Right. And my first major film, I starred in it. So I'm not mad at that at all. And then my second film was like C to Chucky. Right. Mm -hmm. that was, wasn't that Bob Dylan's son, High High? Yeah. Jesse Dillon. Jesse! That's that, my nigga. That, that was his first yeah. film, too. That was his, uh, actually like one of his first films because he did a lot of commercials. Like he, you, he used to do the Dorito commercials and stuff like that. But he moved. That was like his really first film. Right. And he, and he killed it. We, you know, the kid, we, it's great. It's great. And, 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 and it, it wasn't, it's just not like, let, like, you know, what it's like working with Jesse Dillon. Because Jesse Dillon is a is a is a great director and he he has a visual and he come across it very well. But it's also the crew. Everybody know what if the crew is not happy, you're not gonna have a good film. Everybody was happy till the catering, to the 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 the, the dressing, to to the to the proper to the to the to the to. The, to to the what you call it, the little even adding little things like ashtrays on the scene. Those people, <laughs> you know what I mean? They were set happy. Decorator. Yeah, decorator, set decorator, you know, clothes decorator. Everybody was so happy. He must puff if he does his movies. Well, you know what? I never seen him puff, so I can't blow him up on camera like that. Right, right. But. I'm sure he do. And after he did do the movie, I'm sure he had to hit the blunt like, yeah, this is some nice shit. And they got great reviews and it was great review by the hood as well. So it's great, man. Everybody was happy. Every time me and Meth came on the scene every morning, you know, we was like, hey, everybody. Everybody was like, hey. It was like, you know, get the car. Every time we did a scene, everybody was laughing because it was real. It was funny. We, we ad-libbed most of the movie. You know, we got the scenes and ad-libbed it. Felt what we wanted so to put you in there. Well, yeah, the whole thing was ad lib. You know, I just thought to myself before, you know, I like preparing. That's why I was at the Stonies like three in the afternoon when they told me to be there and no one was ready. And and, and it ain't get to rehearsal till five thirty, six, and only had ten minutes. But in that time, <laughs> I was getting high. And I was also just thinking, you know. You know, this is my first time really hosting on an award show, and it was a privilege. I, I really like like to thank Stoney again and High Times for giving me that privilege to do that because I never did that, and it was fun. I don't think I could have did that for MTV or BET. You make it to the Oscars, man. No, That's man, true. fuck the Oscars, fuck the Grammys, fuck you know. After you doing that, go for it as a comedian, a comic. Nah, nah, you, I'm an MC, man. Like I'm an MC. Like I, I do the Stonies. You know, I'm limited to the what Stonies now. And you know what, man? We do the doobies? I do the doobies. I do the doobies with y'all. Yeah, I'm, I do the doobies with y'all. Like, I do the doobies with, you know, you know, together. I'm part of the High Times family now, so that's, that's not even the big issue. The big issue is, like, I've been to award shows and shit, and just the privilege, again, like I said, what High Times gave me with the Stonies, it was like, man, like, this is how shit is supposed to be to me at my level. Of of who I am, you know what I mean. Maybe when you know other people look at the tape, they'd be like, "Yeah, we want to get Red Man to do a Grammy or a host of." No, nah, I mean it was just like nobody ain't believing me then. Nobody ain't believing me to even get a ticket to go to the Grammys. So why would I do they shit now when Hot Times gave me they first prop a lot? So I'd rather just roll with them and they shit, man. You know, and and y'all keep doing y'all motherfucking thing because y'all doing it right. And weed also calms motherfuckers down. You know, I noticed at the Stonies that there wasn't no egos. Because this shit is important. Like, you know, when motherfuckers, even, you know, top interviews or, you know, the media want to find out, well, it's just smoking. No, it's, it's more than just smoking. It's, it's, it's representing something. Also, it's representing the love that we brings people together without all the bullshit. You ain't hear not one thing that went wrong at the Stonies. I mean, in the backstage... Nobody don't give a fuck about who going on first. Nigga, go on first. Take your time, nigga. You know, nobody don't have no egos. Nobody's not. Everybody's smoking to be looking who got a chain on or who got the hot sneakers on. It was, it was crazy. It was full of smoke. Who the fuck cares? But they do, what do come out at the Stonies is real personality. And when people get high, 
sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you see another side of people when they get high around people, like, oh, damn, they get crazy. But then again, you see the most of the side, like, hey, we here, we high, fuck everybody else. We got our thing going on, and we smoking in BB Kings in all 42nd Street. What better shit is that? When they kick niggas out for smoking, so had the great time, man. I had to I had to elaborate on that real a lot on for the Stonies because it it it, it, it left a mark right here. Well, you know, important in my heart. <laughs> important ceremonies manifest real energies. Exactly. And that's what that's what we do because nobody else wants to hold real counterculture ceremonies because the fact is cannabis is the cer is the sacrament of counterculture, and by counterculture I mean. There's only one place in North America where blacks, Native Americans, and whites could get together and party. A little block in New Orleans. And just started manifesting drum circles there. And Native Americans and whites. Everybody's invited. I mean, they're historians of the music, like Fred, you know, Fat Five Freddy? Fred yes. Bradway, he knows all his history, too. We're like only the few, few people that actually know what really happened and what's really going on with all this stuff. This is, this is what I gotta use a, that in a row. We're, we're an evolving improvisational culture that worships improvisation as, as opposed to dogma and rules. And right. We manifest direct from our heart to action to word. Right. And it's been that way since they blew the first solos in Congo Square. See? And basically, that kind of reaction is uh, mo most of the time a positive reaction. Well, that kind of spirituality is very fluid because it can reinvent itself every generation. It can adapt. It can grow. It can flourish. It can expand. That's right. Just like Whereas it grew to me. Spiritualities are dead. They're encapsulated. They're, you know what I mean? Right. They can't grow. So, and they had the bomb back then, too? Reefer's all part of this. That's where the Golden Reefer came from. The Mes Mesro Reefer came from New Orleans. The music came from New Orleans, the whole scene came from New Orleans. It came up the Mississippi River and jumped over to New York from there and then jumped over to the West Coast. But, and it's still evolving today, jumping back from one coast to the other as it evolves. Exactly. So. Exactly. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Lesson learned. Hey, Conga Square. What are you doing over Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving, I'm going to be eating with family. I'm going to be in town. Okay. You ever been in town? Can no, I haven't been. Cannabis cup is in Thanksgiving? Oh, Lord. Yeah. Man, see, if you show up at, at the Cannabis Cup, you got a backstage VIP pass anytime, anywhere, any place. We'll put you up on stage instantly, get you, you know, whatever you want at the Cannabis Cup. You just got to show up. We'll, Where is it at? You're now so royally inside the High Times world that you basically show up at any one of our. We got parties all the time. We got a great party in the grill, Miss High Times, the pageant. Uh huh. We picked the hottest stoner girl. Oh, wow. That's in January in the grill. So we got a film festival. And the cannabis cup? And Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day? Yeah. Well, Thanksgiving night is the award show. But it, it goes for a whole, you know, four days before that. It starts on Sunday, really goes to Thursday. Always ends on Thanksgiving. And where is it? Uh, different places in Amsterdam. All over the town. You know, it's a whole week of events. And all the best growers and breeders in the world get there. And we test all the strains and we pick the world's greatest pot. For that moment, at that time, this is the strain. And we've been doing it for 20 years. It is the Academy of Awards of Marijuana. 